right, good evening. So kids are the best advocates for running barefoot and free. Like Laura Ingalls in the picture down there on the left, I took my shoes off in April and I didn't put them on again until October. Now my two girls do the same thing. Remember when running was fun? Remember when grass tickled your toes and mud felt really good? Even so, I'll never forget the first pair of shoes I lusted after. When I finally got a pair of zips, they totally sucked. <laughs> no grass flew up behind me and I still couldn't jump. And 30 years since this ad, shoe companies have spent billions of dollars trying to convince us that shoes will make us more wonderful in every possible way. So I gave up on fancy shoes, but not on running. In 1984, Joan Benoit had just won the women's first Olympic marathon, and I wanted to be strong and fierce like her. But as I got bigger, I felt painfully earthbound and uncoordinated, and my knees hurt like hell most of the time, and I had a hard time running. By college, I was used to the pain, and I was, uh, but I was a fanatical athlete anyway. I ran my first marathon with my twin brother, who's a leukemia survivor, and encouraged me to race with him as part of the Leukemia and Lymphoma, Lymph Lymphoma Society's team and training. In my 20s, I ran several more marathons and backpacked over 7,000 miles, sometimes hiking 40 miles a day. By the time I was 27, I had stress fractured my femur, tore my knee and ankle ligaments, had multiple stress fractures in my feet, bursitis behind my knees and aromas, bunions and hammer toes on both feet. I tried heavy boots, light boots, and every kind of orthotic I could find. Around that time, a fellow yoga teacher that had completely rehabilitated her own feet through stretching and strengthening taught me to do the same. I backed off from marathons and found a sport where running is only a third of the event. <laughs> so I threw away my orthotics and found the lightest, most flexible shoes I could. And that year, the book Born to Run came out and changed the shoe world forever. So the book follows Scott Jurek, one of the best <coughs> shoed ultra runners, and his competitor, the sandal Taramara runner Ar Arnulfo, through the Copper Canyon Ultra Marathon in Mexico. And I won't tell you who won, but the author, author Christopher McDougall does a great job arguing for the benefits of shoeless running. As it turns out, there have been all kinds of people running barefoot pretty much forever. Zola Budd was beating the pants off her competitors in the 1980s, and Ethiopian athlete Abibi Bakila won the Olympic marathon in 1960. Of course, there's always been the Serengeti pursuit hunters that chase after antelope barefoot, and everywhere I've ever traveled, football has played barefoot. So I ditched my shoes. At first, it hurt a lot, and the girls easily beat, beat me running down our gravel driveway. But shoes are like earplugs. If you've been wearing them your whole life, when you first take them off, everything sounds really loud. After a while, you regain your sensitivity, and your feet, like ears, begin to pick out what sensations are important and what can be ignored. So everything's more fun barefoot now. Oh, you've got to click it to play the video. <coughs> Maybe. Uh, so that's, uh, this summer I hiked Katahdin and the knife edge barefoot. And I love geology and being barefoot gave me a whole new appreciation for the texture and variety of rocks. I've also been really mindful of my foot placement has definitely increased my agility and fish efficiency on trails. So there's some places that don't want to share their germs with my feet, uh, which, is, which is totally cool of me, because um, inside floors make my feet a lot grosser than trails and roads. The sign on the right is from Mount Washington, which is funny because I hiked up there barefoot. Um, so the other thing is I am a woman, and I own too many shoes, especially since I'm into being barefoot. There's a lot of minimalist and barefoot styles to choose these days, and most of them are too small, too ugly, and too expensive. So I put a lot of hours into testing them to find the right ones. My favorite ones were the sandals that I made homemade. And what I'm looking for is a good flexible shoe. Um, they need to bend, they need to twist side to side. It's a really important action of your foot for healthy foot maintenance. They need to be thin on the sole and uh, with no heel drop, so no drop from the heel to the forefoot. They're going to be totally level. And that's hard to find, actually. Um, it turns out that uh, it's not about where you, whether you wear shoes or not. It's more about the technique that you develop when you're barefoot running. And that is that you're running on your midfoot or your forefoot and not landing on your heel. Um, the technique isn't complicated at all. My kids do it naturally. And uh, the key is a super light mid or four, forefoot strike, tall posture, and quick turnover. And these are videos, but I guess the videos aren't working tonight. Um, so older kids can learn it too, 
And in the last couple summers, I've hosted a few barefoot running classes with adults. It's been super fun getting people running around in their socks and um, barefoot around the park. And it really helps people with knee pain. So hopefully by now you're questioning shoes. And of course, there are times when shoes are a really appropriate tool and can enhance a specific activity, like climbing shoes that purposely turn your foot into a stiff platform to support your weight on thin holds. But the problem is more often inappropriate shoe use is glamorized with terrible effects. <laughs> so there's times when shoes are simply not needed. So we've got a picture of Surrey here. And unless you're Katie Holmes and you want your daughter's feet to look just like yours when she grows up, uh, take your shoes off often. I do like the cat duster, though. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So every, one time, every time someone tells me, oh, barefoot, you're brave, that must hurt, I think of these pictures. His shoes have done far more damage to my feet than barefooting has. In fact, running on pavement results in a perfect and free pedicure. I still spend a ton of time babying my feet. I check in with them every day. And why not? They're holding me up and following me around all day long. And they deserve a lot of love. My feet are super strong now. I have no injuries to my feet, my knees haven't hurt in five years, and I have stronger hips than I've ever had. So I'm planning to run some maybe 30 to 50 mile trail races this year, and uh, we'll see. And I'll probably wear some shoes now that I have good technique. I think getting rid of my boots has been good for both of us. <laughs> so, if you want to follow my adventures or, or know what I'm up to or even take an adventure with me, like going to Costa Rica this spring, which is a great place to be barefoot, um, you can check it out at wildopenheart.com or come talk to me. Thank mm -hmm. you.